I recently started watching the TV show Star Wars Rebels again, and I was pleasantly surprised it wasn't nearly as bad as I remembered it being when it first aired almost nine years ago. One could even say I enjoyed it. It ended up sparking some creativity in me, and I decided I wanted to build a Lothal diorama. Lothal is a planet in Star Wars where a huge chunk of the show takes place. I began looking at some concept art and scrolling through Pinterest for some inspiration, and after playing around with my minifigures, I got to building. I start every mock by first sketching it out. The base would be a tan landscape with various slopes and tiles. A 16x16 16 16 building on the right with some graffiti by Sabine Wren, a character in the show, and a bigger building on the left with some greebling, a couple doors, and more graffiti. Before I begin building, I like to clean off my workspace and wash my hands. I don't want my bricks getting all dirty and covered in dust. I start every build using these big 16x16 16 16 plates to map out the build. I prefer to use plates instead of base plates because you can't build off the bottom of base plates. I like to roughly know the dimensions before I begin, and these big plates allow me to see that. They also help make the base of the mock really sturdy for when I pick it up and move it around later in the build process. After arranging the various base plates, I like to connect and secure them all by using 2x4 bricks. After adding the bricks, I flip the base over and add some long plates to the bottom. Like I said earlier, this is why I use plates instead of base plates. The reason I add plates to the bottom of the mock is so when I add the modified bricks with studs on the side and then add the plates to the sides of those, they are completely flush with the ground. This is a great way for me to use the snot technique when building up the landscape. Once I finished adding all of the modified bricks and the plates onto those, it is time to gather up all of my tan slope pieces for the landscaping. There is no real method to my madness when I build landscapes. Most of the time I will randomly start placing slopes and rearrange them until they look smooth and clean looking. For this landscape, I didn't mind leaving some studs showing. The outer layer is finished. Once I got most of the base covered with slopes, round slopes, plates, wedges, and cheese slopes, it was time to build inward. For a lot of the base, I used tan tiles to simulate a smooth, sandy texture. However, I left some spots covered in studs to break that up. Lothal doesn't have a ton of foliage and shrubbery, especially in the city, but I still wanted to add something to the landscape. I thought these tan bars kind of looked like dried wheat grass. I thought these would be a great way to break up some of those tan tiles. I really liked the way these bits turned out. Now that most of the landscaping is done and all of the gaps are filled in, it's time to move on to the buildings. I decided to build the structures using mostly light bluish gray and old gray. Even though in a lot of the source material the buildings looked tan, I didn't want them to be tan because I worried people would think I was building Tatooine. The buildings were pretty straightforward. I wasn't going for a really complex design. 
I also wanted to keep most of the greebling, piping, wires, and electrical all gray, silver, or black. I didn't mind the buildings looking boxy because I really wanted the graffiti to pop off the gray walls. When I start adding more and more gray bricks around the design, it's always so fun to see how well the graffiti design stands out. The graffiti designs are by far the most complex part of this mock. They required a lot of trial and error trying to get them to fit flush into the walls. I'm really happy though with how well I was able to incorporate them into this mock. I especially love the yellow and orange colors I used for this design. When you look at the interior, you can really see how complicated it was to get it to fit into the wall. Now that the front of the structures are done, it is time to add some supports in the back to make them more stable. This also allows me to add some plates onto the roof so I can begin building on top of those. For the back I used various support beams and big panel pieces. I find these work really well and I also just like the look of them, especially the yellow supports. I still don't worry too much about how the back sides of my mocks look because in the final pictures you will never be able to see them. Now moving on to the top of the buildings. I wanted to add some matching round slopes to the top of both structures. Since both buildings are pretty rectangular, the round roof will stand out nicely and make the building look more complex than it actually is. I used jumper plates, tiles, and 1x1 one one plates to create this cool texture. The final step, which is also my favorite step in my build process, is adding little details and minifigures. Since this is a Star Wars mock, I love adding crates, antennas, wires, and other sci-fi looking objects. For the minifigures, I decided to add some stormtroopers in their Rebels show armor, some Imperial officers, and some of the cast of the Rebels show like Sabine, Chopper, Hera, and Ezra. I had a Bricklink order for Kanan minifigure, but he sadly didn't arrive in time. Once I finished placing all of the minifigures, I called it good. <laughs> 